Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Tomas Alas of the Tactical Tavern channel on YouTube and Instagram. I met Tomas at the We Knives booth at Blade Show 2021, where he made quite an impression on me. He obviously knew his way around the knives, but also showed a certain charisma, which comes across boldly in his videos. Though he has an obvious fondness for tactical knives and gear, as it's in his name, he does not come across, he does not present himself as an overly tactical guy. He doesn't need to because he's got the skills to preclude talk. A notable thing about Tomas, uh, without even knowing it, he is the first person ever in many years to convince me to spend over $100 on a flashlight. Yes, 100 bucks on a flashlight. You know how I feel about flashlights, but we'll find out how he managed to do that in a minute. Before we do, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell and download the show to your favorite podcast app. And as always, if you want to help support the show, you can do so on Patreon. Quickest way to get there is to head over to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. Tomas, welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Hey there, how's it going? It's going great. Great to see you, man. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. So I, I remember meeting you at the Wii booth, and um, you showed me that, now I'm forgetting it, I should have done my research, but you're the one who showed me that uh, fixed blade knife that Wii sells that comes uh, that uh, has that canted angle that you can uh, adjust. Yes, um, the, yeah, the Orthrus. The Orthrus. And, yeah. and you had a tactical dummy there and you showed it off and I was like, whoa, that is that is rad. How did you get hooked up with Wii Knives then? Wow. Um, that's a pretty wild story. I actually uh, started the channel. I think I was at 200 subscribers. So we were we were doing really hot. And uh, <laughs> I sent myself down to Blade Show West. I was like, you know, I'm going to take whatever budget I thought I had and I'm going to I'm going to take myself and send it there. It was the most rewarding experience I've ever had because I, I was just I was in the abyss. It was my first time at like a real blade show. I was like seeing people that I thought that I'd recognize and uh, like tops guys and, and Bastion and all these crazy cool people. And uh, I started talking to this guy at the Wee booth. Uh, his name's Jim O'Young. And uh, he was like the most fun, energetic person. And, and we just hit it off. And he introduced me to a couple people and uh couple couple months after he he like followed up and he's like you doing anything uh this summer and i was like well you know i'm trying to record and he goes we got a spot open why don't you come down and uh come come work it and so it didn't work out where i wasn't able to go to that show but the following one the first show i've ever done was shot show in vegas and oh, so that's man. talk about like you know t drinking from the fire hose because that was just <laughs> nuts so um they're incredible guys. Seth is the uh, the team leader over there, and and he's I would follow that guy anywhere. He's a he's a fantastic human. And Kyle, I don't know, you know, Cougar Kyle. Yeah, they got yeah. He's a he's a ball of energy. That guy's running like fifty miles a day, man. I'm, it's nuts. So yeah, a great team over there, and uh, yeah. So did you always have a fondness for the Wee Knives? Was that uh, was that a draw? I I did. The, the first one I got was like the Roxy Three. I think it was, oh, and, yeah. and it. And it had like that flame anodized and, and I'd never felt something so smooth. And I was like, cage ceramic ball bearings, like what the heck? Uh, and it just kind of grew from there. It was like one of the first knives I kind of like really started like putting a lot of money towards and, and collecting and just hit it off from there. Well, where, where did your uh, love of knives come from originally? <sighs> originally, I would say, uh, working a lot with the scouts uh i'm a eagle scout and, and grew up you know from the cub scouts all the way through so like whittling you know your pinewood derby car and 
uh, having a blast with that. And I just got hooked. I was like, you mean we can carry these things like with us anytime, anywhere? And uh, and yeah, my, my first ever pocket knife was one of those like really small, like Swiss Army knives. Sliced my fingers so hard with that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was hooked ever since. Oh, oh man, you were hooked. See, some yeah. people. Okay, so I've I've been a, a bit of a, um, a missionary at work, getting everyone knives, getting people into knives that originally. And th this was the thing I would always get. Oh, I couldn't have a knife; I'd cut myself. And I, yeah. I was like, yeah, that's kind of the point. It shows ownership. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, in in the martial arts world, it's like it's not really yours until it bites you. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Um, Martial arts. We got to talk about that. I I, uh, I recognized immediately that you've got some serious, <laughs> some Kali skills for sure, or at least that's what I that's what it looks like to me. Um, what? How long have you been doing that? And what uh, what style of of martial arts do you practice? Yeah. Uh, when whenever like someone on the street asks me that, because like they'll see me filming like crazy videos, and and they'll be like, "What kind of karate is that?" And I'm like, "Oh man!" Like <laughs> I, I was. I, I always respond and I go, oh, I just watch a lot of YouTube and they're like, Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. So I, I just like skirt <laughs> the question. Cause it's like, it's a lot to explain to people that are like, you know what? Yeah. Um, but to answer your question, it's a, it's a variety. Um, I, I will train in just about anything I can get my hands on. Um, a great mentor of mine, uh, Jared Arbuckle from advanced self-defense concepts. He's in uh, Upland, California the most lethal guy that i know like hands down like you, you could look at him you, you'd see him in like a costco and you'd like never recognize him just you know just a plain guy but he has a heart of gold man he is like the most fun guy to be with and he trains kung fu sand so defense lab which i was making a lot of fun of until he showed me some stuff from there uh have you heard of defense lab no i haven't okay so it's based, I'm going to try to do it without like blocking the mic, but it's like meant for multiple um, attacker situations. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're, you're covering, you're, you're using, uh, there's like oh, seven yes. uh, points of like knockout. So you're like covering all those and, and, and striking. And I, I sent him a video one time uh, after we met and I, and I just, I was just like rubbing myself like this and I go, I'm defense lab, bro. And, <laughs> and I was like, totally like roasting him. And so we met up in, in person at his dojo and he goes, I'm going to show you defense lab. And I go, all right, let's do it, bro. And, and, and he, and I, he beat the crap out of me. Um, it was beautiful because it's just, it's so body mechanic and everything is elbows and strikes. And he goes, just so you know, this is what uh, they taught Batman for the dark Knight." And I'm like, what? <laughs> and it's true. Like the, the, it's, it's a multiple uh, attacker situation and I was hooked. So uh, yeah, anything I can get my hands on, I'm, I'm training. But, but you did, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say that stuff is cool. I have seen, I have seen that. It's, uh, I, I remember thinking it's radical covering. It's like covering to the point where you're striking. You know, right. um, you know, with all the, all the different guarding of the head and stuff like that. I thought it looked ridiculous until he, until I felt it, and I think that that's a cool thing too. Like, I, it taught me to keep an open mind. I'll tell you that. You know, don't don't judge everything just from what you see. It's it's good to feel it and, and pressure test it. And I think Jared will attest that that he likes that I ask him questions and and I push him. So, uh, you, you did pick up on some Filipino martial arts. I also train uh, Escrima, um, which is pretty wild. So that's with uh, original Garon Escrima. Hmm. And uh, it's like from World War II. So it's like battle tested, uh, right. real, real deal stuff. So it's <laughs> so you're pretty lethal, man. No, that's it's a good thing to be. I mean, uh, you know, it's the Jordan Peterson thing. You want to be a monster, but keep it keep it under wraps until it's absolutely necessary to use. Agreed. And and some of the most like deadly people that I know are like the kindest people ever, like, like would literally give you the shirt off their back or help you in any situation. And, and those are the kind of people that I want to surround myself with. And it's because they have that confidence because they know, like, you know, they'll, you know, <laughs> you yeah, <out>. yeah. but, <laughs> but it's, it's just, it's that humble nature. It's that, that humble warrior is, is, uh, what, what I try to strive strive to be and, and just follow the footsteps of, of great people uh, that came before me, man. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I, I would, what would you say to anyone? I mean, I, I like to encourage everyone of all ages to do something like that. Uh, 
Well, what would you say uh, if someone's kind of got uh, got it in their mind, maybe from watching your videos, man, I like the way this guy moves and it's obviously uh, practical. It's obviously um, applicable because you're showing how you can actually use it. And you're yeah. not doing anything approaching instructional videos. You're doing fun videos. I mean, you, yeah. with the masks you have behind you, but, but you're also doing cut tests and it's obvious right. that you, you know what you're doing. So how, how do you encourage people to involve themselves? That's a great question. I would tell anyone that that comes up to me and ask, I, I always tell them, I said, there's no good martial art. And the usual reaction is like, oh, like what? That's not what my sensei said. I'm like, no, there's no good martial art. There are only good martial artists. And that's really important to distinct, like separate from, because it's like you could have the most perfect system in the world, but that might not work for everyone's body type. So I always encourage people to like, go check it out. Like, um, I had a friend recently who was in the similar boat. He goes like, dude, like you're a ninja. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm far from it, bro. I'm, I'm thick. Okay. That's what I am. And, and he's like, well, how do I get started? And I said, go to every dojo in your area and see what they're like. And, and for me, it's like, you want to connect with people They they should open the doors and invite you in and treat you like they've already known you for, for a long time. Um, at least in my opinion, that that's how I would do it because you, you want to, you want to welcome people into this, this art form, whether it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Krav Maga or, um, you know, even Taekwondo, um, no matter what it is, they should be welcoming. And, and then just from there, kind of see what, what fits your body type, what fits your mentality and, and what are you trying to do? Are you trying to, you know, do something stun and get away? Or are you, you know, planning on doing some UFC stuff? Um, and then kind of like gauge, uh, gauge what you found out from there yeah yeah i think that's really important knowing what you're going into it for some mm -hmm. it's a great sport if you're just someone who wants to do sport it's a it's a great way to compete great way to stay in shape and that kind of thing uh or you might want to you know you talk about pressure testing mm -hmm. um the i'm doing something right now where it's the first time uh i've actually been involved in like actual pressure testing martial arts where you know you wear a cup and you use it and 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 it's important because um well it gets you into certain positions so that the person you're training with can continue with the technique or or um well anyway i i do think it's important to distinguish whether you want to go into something where you're just going to be you know getting the exercise or whether you want to uh take it uh, be a little bit more aggressive with it Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it's always about finding that, that mindset of like, you know, what, what do you, what's, what's your end goal is usually a good yeah. question to kind of like base it off of. And you, you mentioned cups. Uh, one of the best cups that I found is called the nutty buddy. Uh, this is not sponsored in any way, shape or form, <laughs> yeah. but I tell you what, that thing has saved my butt multiple times it uh there's a video on youtube of them like taking like a, a softball pitcher you know like, yeah, yeah. Like, shoot out the zoom, zoom. the guy's just like taking them and yeah so the nutty buddy is uh highly recommended if you want that you know that full full protection right there yeah and the baseball players wear those at the, that's why they do that in their in their ads so <clears throat> If you want to be protected against a 95 mile an hour baseball, it's a good option, man. Yeah, um, so, yeah. so Eagle Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, which I really admire. I, I, I didn't do that. I uh, didn't go that route. Um, but so you're going from knife usage in a um, self-preservation way different than the sort of knife usage you get. Uh, in the self-preservation way in martial arts. What I'm trying to say is uh, in the scouts, you learn how to camp, you learn how to use your knife for woodcraft and survival and, uh, you know, camping and that kind of thing. Uh, how, what was the crossover like from, from that kind of practical knife usage to the kind of stuff you're featuring on your channel now? That's a really good question. Um, the crossover kind of happened uh, at a martial arts, uh, kind of demo, if you will. Like, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm always a, a student. I'm never going to think, ah, I finally got it all. Like the moment you have that mentality, like you're done. So I always like to go to seminars. I always like to, to meet new people and, and see what other kind of cultures and, and martial arts are. And I was probably like, it was like, right. I don't know, maybe like 14 or something. I was kind of, you know, like really curious. And there was this just old, you know, crotchety, like a uh, Filipino guy. And, uh, and he pulled me up for a demo and I'm like, 
what, what do you want him to do, man? Like, <laughs> and in like three seconds, he like hit every major artery that I had, you know, with a training knife. Yeah. And I was like, I've never seen anything like it before. And I go, because you know, part of the scout motto is, you know, always be prepared. Right. And so for me, it kind of like kind of shifted my mentality of like, I better be prepared for, for everything, not just the outdoor type stuff. And that's what kind of got me into the everyday carry. And, uh, and it's really a lot of mentors that are like, if you're going to carry a pocket knife, you better know how to use it. So it doesn't get turned against you. And that way, you know what the capabilities are. So you actually respect it. Um, so that's kind of where that, that paradigm shift happened. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting to the, the famous boy scout, always be prepared motto. Um, well, it evolves after the Boy Scouts, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if if the Eagle Scouts, if they do anything like that sort of, um, you know, uh, fighting kind of training. But but yeah, being living in this world, uh, yeah. it's always been, you know, it feels to us like it's especially dangerous, but it's always been dangerous and probably way more than it is right now. And to be um, to be prepared and to be um, uh, well. To, to flow in your own environment in such a way that you've, you've got some mastery of it, or at least feel like you can walk around without uh, feeling uh, excessive fear all the time. Um, right. That's a very important, important thing. It, it's, it's all mental too. I mean, you can choose to be a victim or you can choose to be someone that would help prevent other people from being a victim. And uh, I think, you know, you see it every day of like people like stepping in or, um, you know, like everyone coming together to lift up a car and it's like, all it takes is one person. And, and I just, I would want to be that person to just start or just be there to help someone else. So I hope that there's other people out there that would do the same. And I know there are, uh, just trying to, you know, surround yourself with as many of those people as you can. Yeah. Yeah. And, and out there on the street, People today are more willing, as we are well aware, to pull out their camera and help that way. Oh, I'm going to document this so the guy can get arrested. Well, really, you're right. It does take just one person to inspire action, to jump in there and pull the the, the pit bull off the old man, you know, and then other people run in. That's just an example that just popped into my head from recent news. But the point is, it just all it takes is one person to actually do something and, and then it could snap people out of there malaise oh yeah that's right let's go help and right. to be that person is you know is what you want to be yeah absolutely so what what about your channel then so how did this lead how did this abiding love for knives but also for being prepared lead to the tactical tavern channel yeah that i love that question um it started in the scouts honestly i was uh there was this one camp out. It was like really my first camp out, like long term. It was like a week. And I go, I, I have nothing. Like I gotta get, I gotta get ready for this. And so uh I went to Walmart, like you know, every scout goes to, and I think it was like then big five to get the rest of it. And I got talked into buying the worst kind of gear that they had. And it, you know, my backpack weighed probably like 80 pounds of just nonsense, you know, and, oh, it was terrible. So we, we're, we're hiking up this hill and we were in a, a camping area called the rooster's nest, I believe is what it was, which is just like up a steep grade. And I'm like, oh crap. So of course my friend and I, Matthew, we're like the slowest because our packs are the biggest, you know, we had to get like other, other scouts and adults, like, I was like get it on. Cause we had all this gear we get we get the worst the the last like tent you know these are like you know 1960s like military tents that are just you know hanging on for dear life and that first night a storm blows in like a nasty one and it wasn't really predicted and i had you know this waterproof sleeping bag right no definitely was not waterproof it contained a lot of water by the end of the night um the entire tent collapsed uh we're soaked we're like you know shivering and to make matters worse there was an anthill underneath like these boards <laughs> that the tent was on so just if you can imagine like a horror movie like just bugs coming out everywhere and you know we like ran out like made a fire um and we're we were just like drenched you know it's like in the rain we're like huddling under a tarp uh it was awful and 
in the morning, a lot of scouts, you know, came up, helped us like dry out our stuff. We made a big fire. And it was that moment, that like horrible moment of me just like freezing. My hands are numb. I'm like, I'm never going to be this unprepared again. It just, it was burned into my mind. Like I never want to feel this, this, you know, vulnerable again. And, uh, and so from that day on, I was like, I'm dedicating myself to gear. And, and I was known as the gear guy in my troop. Like, you know, if you had a gear question, come to Papa, like <laughs> I'm going to help you out. <laughs> and, and it, it kind of evolved into like, people would ask me like a lot of questions and I'm like, well, I've already answered this like four times. Like, why don't I just record it? And so I thought, uh, you know what, maybe I could help out a lot more people kind of reviewing gear and and sharing with them some experiences and just having fun with it. Uh, and then the tactical tavern was born with the slogan, be prepared, be practical and stay tactical. And you went out there thinking you were prepared. That's the thing. Uh, you know, you, you went to Walmart, you bought all the kit, you just didn't know the right stuff. And right. you went out there and it could have cost you dearly uh, being a, uh, I'm, I'm seeing an old canvas, uh, surplus tent. Yep. I'm seeing an old metal frame backpack and all that. Um, so yeah, it, you, you know, people kind of make fun of gear nerds and, uh, you know, I'm, I, I get it, but right. really that stuff can save your life. It, it can. And, and it also taught me too, that it, it's not so much the gear at times. It's more so the mentality because, one of those old scout masters, you know, some like old vet that was just like, you know, you don't mess with, with this guy. He came over and, and he like used some paracord and like lashed it up and like slapped some duct tape. And like the tent was as good as it was better than it was before. And he's like, that's how you do it right there, boy. And I'm like, whoa. And he like hooked it up, man. He, he's like, he had like a pulley system. And I'm like, you know, he's using a shoelace and like, you know, bubble gum. I'm like, holy crap. Like, this is beautiful to watch. I want to be like that. Like, I want to be able to like, fix things on the fly and, and again it just comes back to like helping people and and in uh, scouts we call it like do a good turn daily um hmm. and and it's like that that just really stuck with me and, and it's it's a beautiful thing so so are you still involved uh with the scouts do you um uh, export your knowledge to the scouts these days whenever i can absolutely yeah and and it's obviously changed a little bit too but I, I try to live every day to the fullest. And so it, maybe it's not necessarily a scout that I'm helping, but maybe it's just some, some random person or, you know, get, getting a grocery for the person that's next to me, like whatever, if I can do it, I will. And, and it, I've seen it happen where like you, you just affect one person's life and it has like this beautiful ripple effect of like, Oh my gosh. Um, you know, you just, if you, if you can like positively share something good with someone else, they're more likely to do it to someone else. So it kind of flows it just keeps going. And now you do it on mass with the tactical tavern uh, channel. So tell me about your videos and um, what inspires you to make them. Well, you got some great shorts. Um, you, you know, your, your short videos are awesome. And then your, your breakdown videos are really good too. They're, they're different. And uh, that variety is always welcome on a channel uh, like that. But uh, first, you you have an obvious love of horror movies, as we can see from the masks behind you. Um, there, there, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, tell me about the um, the inspiration you get from that, and and how it feeds your creativity. Absolutely, it's uh, it definitely fuel fuels like the the passion for martial arts because you know what if you're facing this invincible, you know, like Michael Myers, right? Like, what are you gonna do? you know and how are you going to handle that you know because there's you know there's real michael myers out there um and, and so that's always kind of like well shoot man like there, there's obviously a love uh for horror movies and, and coming close to you know uh dare i say like you know death or or just you know that gore without really immersing yourself in it so it kind of like comes to, so we can see it and I thought, what a cool way to like branch out and kind of like bring more people into the community and, and preparedness and just have a blast with it. And it was the it was the first video that I ever made that got like over a million views. And it was uh, Michael Myers doing a workout. And I went to my gym and I was just dressed up in the Michael Myers get out and started just going ham with a knife doing what I do. And people left the gym immediately um, <laughs> <laughs> for good reason. You know, I mean, I was like trying to be nice and play like, oh, excuse me, are you using this equipment? And they're like, you know, 
Um, and, and I just, I personally think it's just a really fun way that you can, you can open it up to a variety of people, start a conversation and honestly just have fun, just have fun with it. You know, uh, just in your description, just there, it just struck me, um, that horror movies, you're right. They're, they're, they're a way to, um, uh, sort of, um, it's sort of experience that violence and sort mm -hmm. of experience that core, which is in real life, shocking and horrifying, uh, you know, hence the term horror movie, but um, w without without the full investment of that, um, sometimes, you know, I've thought, well, with all these knives and all this tactical stuff and the swords and and my area of interest in in, you know, Filipino martial arts, like uh, when you when you uh, when you look at the techniques and how they would actually affect another human body, it's 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 grim and it's kind of horrible to think of. And um, y you have to think of that, but mm -hmm. maybe you can approach it in a different way, you know, and, and maybe that's part of, um, maybe that's part of what you're doing, at least for me, you know, I hope so. I mean, it, it kind of like makes people again, like come face to face with like the, the fear of that, of what they have and then putting like a little spin on it and just having fun. And, uh, yeah, we, we, we got a lot of fun stuff planned with that because it's gotten a really good response. People have just like gone wild with it, um, <laughs> which, hey, you know, let's go. People, people are like asking me to like dress up and come to their work. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, <laughs> Do you want to get me shot? What are you talking about? Yeah, what are you <laughs> going to walk down to my local, you know, McDonald's like this? What are you talking about, man? So I, I'm very selective of like when uh, when I have fun with it and um but, but again, it's like, it's fun. And that's, I think a lot of times like you always, you always met with like all this like stress, you know, it's like taxes and, you know, mm -hmm. relationships and kids. And, um, I think if I can share some joy and just like make some people's day for, you know, w whether it be, you know, 15 seconds in a short, or maybe they're watching some videos comparing the scream knife and the Michael Myers knife. It's like, I, I want to give people as much joy as I can. So uh, I think it's just a, a fun way to do it. And it definitely has a fun culture behind it. Yeah. Yeah. And of course there's, there's the book 119 that we all recognize and, and uh, you know, the, the, the knives that we, Oh yeah. One of the best. Yes. Oh, that's the 120, yeah, right? 120. And I, I picked this one because it's it's versatile. I don't know. I, I just finished reviewing it. But yeah, keep going, keep going. Oh, well, it's a great knife. And we and we all recognize it, whether or not we know it's a buck 120. Uh, we all recognize it because we've seen it in hardware stores our whole life. And then we see it in the Scream movie posters. And uh, to get to get that uh, that review was pretty cool especially in that context now the stuff you do is fun but it's not all fun i mean you really know what you're talking about uh with knives what do you what do you go through to evaluate a knife what what do you look for and is it different you know are you looking for different things depending on folder fixed and all that absolutely um when we first started the tactical tavern i wanted to have like this ranking system where i was like we're gonna make it scientific and I don't know. It just kind of took away some of the fun after having to be so like uh, I rated it on like uh, function pricing, functionality and design, dependability, versatility and carryability. And it was a lot of math. And I was like, I don't know. I don't think people <laughs> I don't think people care that much. So I kind of like shifted away from it. And I'm like, here's my experience with it. Is it good value? Is it something that I would purchase again? And what can you do with it? Right. Like, are you going to be like, like, for example, that tops cut 4.0, it's a pretty versatile mm -hmm. knife, but it may not be the best thing if, you know, you're taking your, you know, your kids to and from like daycare, right? Like you might want something a little bit like a pocket knife. So I always kind of think of like the end user in mind and then what can they do with it? And, and, uh, yeah, I, it's just been wild because there's so much gear and I do love knives. So I do feature a lot of knives, but it branches out in the flashlights, backpacks, uh, escape and evasion gear, just all sorts of cool trinkets. Uh, let's talk about flashlights for a second. So as I <laughs> as I mentioned up front, it was a story you told that finally convinced because you know I've been flirting with the idea of getting yeah you know, I've got I've got flashlights all over the place, but they're little mm -hmm. you know O lights and stuff, nothing too powerful. And um, two things actually, uh, you were the straw that broke the camel's back. Congratulations! But I remember seeing a. Uh, a video with a Navy SEAL saying, oh, best, best urban weapon 
so that you don't get thrown in jail and you can thwart attack is a good tactical flashlight that's bright that has a strobe. I was like, interesting. Uh, I'll file that away and buy another knife in the meantime. And then, <laughs> and then I saw your video. Uh, tell tell us that story because maybe you can help someone else take flashlights a little bit more seriously. Not so seriously that they call them torches, but right. seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it was a it was an interesting evening. Um, I was picking up a friend from a party, and I, I've always been that person where it's like, if if you're drunk or you're high and you can't drive, call me. I, I don't care what time of night it is. Just call me because I'd rather give you a ride than never see you again or you hurt someone else and have to live with that. So uh, I pride myself on being on call. Right. And I'm just like, you know, Tomas's Uber services, like I'll come get you. OK, we'll figure it out later. Um, so a friend did call me and, and I was like, all right, like I'm coming to get you. So I was picking her up and we kind of like got onto the freeway. And I noticed that two cars followed behind me. And I was like, that's odd. And of course, my mind starts racing. You know, I'm like, well, like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Is this the moment? You know, like, and I was like, okay, keep calm. It's probably nothing. And, you know, in, in training and relying back, it's like, just breathe, relax. Maybe it's not as bad as it seems. And in this case, it was as bad as it seems. So I, my guess is that they were possibly either coming for her because they saw her leaving the event or they enjoyed the vehicle that I was driving. I don't know what it was, but as I was driving, they kind of sped up and then slowed down. And, um, it was really interesting because they were trying to like block me in to like get me to turn. Uh, so I used some evasive and defensive driving maneuvers to quickly, uh, get them off of me. I got one off and he kept going and then kind of like into a gas station and that car was nimble enough to come with me. And I'm like, okay, something is off, right? Like I, I checked all the bells. Like this is not normal. It's been multiple turns and back onto the freeway and they're still after me or whoever I was with. And so they were in that gas station and I, I never stopped. And it's quote from uh, Ed's manifesto was, was rolling in the back of my head and stillness is death, right? Like at the moment you stop, you're going to die or worse or whatever. And so I kept going around once and they followed me and tried to get closer. And I, and I, I was like, okay, time to do something. So I pulled out my flashlight and I had the Phoenix TK 20 RV two and I lit them up and there was two hooded figures in there and it burned right through whatever tint they had. And I tell you what, they saw our Lord and savior in that moment. It was beautiful. They, they went from all mean mug into oh, go get it to, Oh heck. And they tore out of there and, uh, it was awesome. Now I'm glad I had it on me and I'm glad I didn't have, you know, like a, a little, you know, battery double a flashlight. It, you know, this is an investment. Um, but 10 times out of 10, I would buy this again. The, uh, any high power tactical flashlight, it is, uh, worth its weight in gold. So we were able to get home safely. So man, there, there is a lot in that story uh that you can learn from uh the very first thing is observing being observant and trusting your instincts trusting your gut um how like do, what kind do you think that uh your your martial arts training gave you that or do you think or or is this just something we all need to cultivate a little bit more um being aware and and being nice but not being so nice that you're not willing to go to the suspicion area for, for sure um i would have to say that one of the best resources that that has changed my mindset on everything uh is ryan atkinson uh he goes by fieldworks online oh yeah and he's my adopted father like adopted as as a joke like you know i accept him as my dad he accepts me as his son and uh <laughs> and i took one of his classes and the rest is history and he went over because uh, he's uh professional security he's you know 54 55 countries he's he's an awesome person and i took one of his classes and he went over a lot about um kind of like executive protection philosophies of you know watching your back kind of having you know walking in a room having your exit planned out you know things that a lot of people kind of i think don't think about and so anytime I, I get on the road now i'm always kind of like a little bit more cautious and especially at that time of night it was a little bit more easy to spot because it's like you know we're the only cars out there hmm. um but i would say definitely uh if you can it's called the cerberus uh mixed skills class with ryan grizzly medical and and 
uh, Jared from Advanced Self Defense Concepts. They they team up and do this incredible class, and that taught me so much about interacting in an urban environment and just you know having a plan and and knowing uh, knowing how to deal with things under stress because you do get pressure tested, as you said earlier. Uh, yeah, I've been following him for probably since I, I got familiar with, um, Ed Calderon and, uh, I guess, I guess the, uh, the algorithm, you know, fed me, uh, Ryan Atkinson and his page is fascinating, uh, on Instagram. And I've seen some of the classes he'll put up, um, you know, he'll yeah. put up multi-picture, um, carousels of, of the classes. And it looks like there's, um, what do they call it? Uh, live not live but um organic medium testing and and then they'll protein tie, baby <laughs> tie you up get you out of you know getting out of uh situations like that um yeah. what is it like getting handcuffed and getting out of that and all sorts of things like that anti-bondage yeah anti-bondage <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm all serious. Just, I, I'm all, yes. I, I call it that as a joke because it's like, you know, what other like grown men and women are like just in this, you know, gymnasium? Like, oh, am I doing it right? You know, yeah. like, oh, you know, it's just it, it's it's a great skill to have. And don't get me wrong. I'm using humor to like, you know, make it accessible to people because I don't want them thinking like, you know, oh, my God, I don't want to get tied up. Like, it's not that bad. It's 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 a great thing to learn because you never know. You know. Nowadays, you never know. I mean, we've heard about people. uh even in home invasions, right? Like they just get zip tied or simple duct tape and, you know, just learning how to break out of it or use your environment, like the edge of a counter to like pop it and, and be able to help people. So, uh, yes, escape and evasion techniques. It just changes your mind on, on how you think about the environment and, uh, you know, different sorts of weapons that are all around you. This, uh, incredibly, uh, unfortunate story, very sad story that just happened this past week where four Americans went down into Mexico. Right. Um, and two of them, two of them haven't, you know, two of them have been killed and uh, I'm not sure what the state is of, of the other two, but, but it was, um, uh, and, you know, kind of seemed, uh, like innocent, like they kind of went in there to, to have fun and it ended horribly um, or it hasn't even ended yet, uh, right. you know, heaven help them. Um, but a little bit of awareness in that situation may have, and in many situations may have stopped them from going at all. You know, in your case with the flashlight, you were there to help a friend. And if you weren't there, who knows what would have happened, you know? Um, so a little bit of that awareness and a little bit of that trusting your instinct, you know, a, uh, where where I live, um, people are, you know, fall all over themselves to be perceived as polite. Uh, there's not a lot of politeness, but there's a lot of I want to be perceived as a good person, you know. Right. And um, and so and so people are uh, in a sense, I mean, just from the people I speak with, um, less willing to make assumptions about people, even if they're not voicing the assumption, but in their mind, oh, you know, I don't want to think that about that person because then I'm casting aspersions on their whole group. And right. that, that's just doesn't seem to be the case. No, I, I think you can always go in with an open mind, but kind of like I mentioned earlier, like have a plan, you know, it, it's like you're kind of being prepared for that situation. Like, you know, trust, but verify, right? It's always good to yes. follow that instinct that, that you know, like oh, the hairs on the back of my head, something just feels a little off. Listen to it. Because majority of the time you're probably going to be right, um, but but like I said, you know, I, I use humor a lot of the time to de-escalate situations, and and you know, it's okay to use self-deprecation. You know, it's like, oh man, I messed up. Sorry, you know, like yeah, whatever. And it's like you can kind of shut shut change people's you know reaction to you. They're like, whoa, whoa what? And so like you know, there, there's a little little tidbit there. Just have a couple of things in your back pocket that you've already pre-planned, and just have them ready to go. And you can always you know test people out kind of get a feel for them and uh classic mcqueen uh i don't know if you yeah. know about him uh micah he is uh he's one of my one of the people i look up to he's like a mentor in, in social engineering and uh, he has a lot of good stuff uh he's also battling cancer right now so uh send some prayers his way and i know he has like a gofundme and all that so check it out but he uh he's fantastic at social networking and just being able to like read people quickly and I think that comes with life experience too, you know, like getting outside of your comfort zone. Cause a lot of people just, you know, they live in this bubble, right. And they're like afraid to, to get out there, but you don't grow unless you're outside of that. 
Well, that instinct, uh, I'm shifting gears just a little bit. Um, that instinct, uh, now that uh, for me, it's, it's been age that has given me some instinct in when I'm being done with knives, because I've cut myself and stabbed myself in so many different ways, uh, privately, publicly at parties yeah. when I'm trying yeah. to be cool, you know, I've, I've done it uh, all sorts of ways. And now I can kind of predict when I'm about to do something stupid with a knife and I can kind of stop myself. Now I say kind of, because I'm not going to rule out <laughs> being stupid, not drinking helps, you know, and, uh, and not being a, a, you know, a, a professional dope helps, but yeah. um, I've been those <laughs> things in the past. Um, but okay. So, so with, with knives, what are your, what do you gravitate towards? I know you, sh you feature different things mm -hmm. on the channel. You just, uh, I, I actually went to your channel to do some Puzan Bowie research. That knife ooh, is so nice. And they just released the predator version of that. And I'm so incredibly yeah. excited. I went to your channel and you, and you were totally, you know, to me, it looks like a nasty fighting Bowie and you were showing it off as an outdoors knife. And I was like, Oh yeah, that's the main purpose of this. What I'm trying to get as what do what do you prefer? Uh, I know you have to feature certain things for your channel, things that uh, uh, that might be more relevant to people's lives. But what do you like better, if these fixed blades or folders? That's a great question. And just real quick before we touch on that, I did want to say thank you, and I'm happy that you got a flashlight. And oh, that good, makes, <laughs> that makes me feel so good that you know we're we're, we're changing people's lives out here. Okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, and 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 actually, just back to your back to that. Yeah. Um, I, I guess the, the real summary of that for me is that, um, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I, I carry multiple knives on me and many, and, 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 and most of them are bent towards tactical use, but that's because that's really my taste. Of course they're on me and I know how to use them and I, and heaven forbid that ever happens. Uh, and hopefully, you know, I would rise to the occasion if need be, but God, man, I never, ever want that to happen. And if I can use a flashlight and blind someone and then sweep the leg or whatever, or run yeah, like yeah. hell, uh, yeah. man, that is, I, you know, I want to live with my family. I don't want to live in a cage. So, uh, and that's what happened, you know, even if, even if it's, oh, it was self-defense people, people do not look kindly upon other people who, who put steel in bodies. You know, and even if it's in uh, self-defense, who knows? It could be that that niceness thing again. Oh, well, you know, because he stabbed that person, he stabbed that entire group of people. Mm. And he, to avoid that, man, is, is the best way just to avoid yeah. it. And if you can do it with a light, you know, brighten their day a little bit. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make them see the light yeah uh, make them see the light uh so, so you asked fixed blades or folders i think was like the general the general yeah. question i i enjoy folders for the accessibility and and luckily like with cold steel there's like a ton of like giant folders so you can kind of get away with that but i have recently kind of shifted to to carrying a fixed blade um when appropriate and i love them. i have i have uh recently or i'm gonna release a video on like my five uh or seven i think i couldn't even make up my mind <laughs> like seven favorite fixed blades and uh one of them that changed my mind let me see if i can find it here mm, there was two of them honestly here it is right here this one is the uh the compliance edge henchman um oh it kind of like reminds me of like a uh what was it the i think you've just featured it the amtac northman or minute yes. man yeah. but this one's like on a, a jenny craig diet but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh this was like one of those first knives that i just like I, I saw in a photo and i go with what i know this is probably gonna melt in my hands and sure enough it just it wraps in there like so perfectly and just it feels so good i um, love his knives man i've never had yeah. one never held one but i love them it's yeah, uh, really enjoy that. So I, I love that that fixed blade as aspect of, of having the, the versatility and strength behind it. But for a lot of the times, a lot of applications, uh, I would rather take a folder just because it's a little bit more concealable, a little easier to carry, and doesn't seem to scare as many people as like you know, drawing a, a fixed blade. So yeah. In the in in it just depends on what, what you're gonna do in your day or just carry both and live the best of both worlds. Well, you you practically almost sold me on the Wii Cherith. Right. Cher Cherith. Uh yes. you just put up a video uh, very recently uh, mm -hmm. on that knife. And and I remember when that came out, well, a few 
few a little while ago. We featured it on the Wednesday supplemental show. I talked about it, and and I remember thinking that's nice, that's nice. But when when you were showing it off, first of all, it looked great because your camera work is great, Thank and you. and and it's you know aesthetically pleasing. But you you basically brought me down to earth with that uh, in 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 showing this three inch knife and how great it is for actual use in actual, um, you know, our, my kind of lifestyle, um, you know, where actually, even though I do carry a lot of big, heavy knives, yeah, um, this is way more suitable uh, to, you know, the kind of pants I have to wear for work, for instance, you know, slacks yeah. and that kind of thing. And then here you're still doing your, your collie with, or your uh, screamer with it. So, you, Gotta get you know, it it's, it's still a knife, you know, but, but it has a, a charm and a, um, you know, a sort of, I don't want to call it precious, but it has a little preciousness to it that yeah. um, is not so grr and it, it yeah. makes, and it works. It, it's elegant is what I like to say. Elegant. Very elegant folder. Yes, please. Yeah. I, I was also going to say another one that I recommend for, if you're along the lines of that, the, uh, the Wii Kulex. Oh, is another fantastic one and i love this uh because of the button lock it's just ultra fidget friendly um and it feels a little bit larger than what it is just because the handle and, and blade shape so uh the Wii kulex would be another another great option with multiple ways to open it as well oh nice well uh, w while we're here uh, besides these two Wii knives what are the ones uh this year or in in 2022 that really uh, got your got your motor running Ooh, that's a good one. I like that. Mm, let's see. Uh, you know, I know it's a Wii, but I also, I love the guys at Wii. And, and this one, this is the Wii Evoke. Ooh. And oh, to, that's a Laconico, right? The, the Ray Laconico, and that one did it for me. You know what doesn't get a lot of love? I'll, I'll show you two of them. One of them is, uh, have you heard of Extrema Ratio? Sure. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. The BD4 Lucky, I, I, it just it does a super thin, so I can wear it anywhere. Very elegant. It's like a, a tie light, you know. It's but just more refined. That one you, still. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You can. It looks like you can wave that open with the quillions there on the blade. There it is. Oh yeah. And I show this, and it, it always gets an uproar whenever I bring this one out. Like pe people are like, "Oh, that's really cool. I like that." And other people are like, "Why you want a pair or not? You know, in your pocket." <laughs> Uh, but this is the uh, the Craig Douglas call. Sweet, love that. love that. So sweet, the Spider Co. I mean, so they were the first. I I, I always forget about that knife because I'm usually, I usually only bring up the uh, the Emerson Elvia or the um, Inversion. Oh yeah. Oh, you yeah. got the waved one too. Yes. Uh, but also the Inversion by Dirk Pinkerton and Kaiser mm -hmm. is a is a sweetie, um, and and. And then uh, Tier One Gear Reviews is coming out with a Shielden made OEM'd uh, little scythe, um, his, his his folding scythe. And I was thinking that those were the only three, and I forgot all about the Spider Co. Picall. They were doing it long before anyone else. I mean, that knife predates the Emerson Elvia by at least ten years, I think. And and yes, and the cool thing about that too is is there's one more I want to talk about, but it's a nice community like in that regard because. Craig Douglas is one of those people that pressure tests everything, right? And that's where that came from. Ed's manifesto, Ed Calderon, he pressure tests everything. And so those are cool people to follow and check out and take classes from. And um, one of the other new ones is uh, is from Fox Knives. It's a it's basically the uh, the 599 Karambit, except it's inverted in a Pakal. And it's gorgeous. I think Giuliano or something is the designer, but it's basically reverse. So you pull it out and it's like a, a Pakal uh, knife with oh, a ring. Sweet. So sweet. I love the 599. I mean, uh, as far as Karambits go, I uh, I have that and the um, Super Karambit from Emerson. Yeah, Emerson. And I, I generally, ever since I discovered uh, Pakal, I, that's way more my speed because... Uh, well, I've I've done some karambit stuff, but I never, you know, I never went too deeply on it, and and that's the kind of weapon that like the less you know, you 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 can know you have to be like really good with it, at least in my mind, to make a karambit uh, functional. Um, yes. But but with a pikal, you know, you can kind of rely on some caveman uh, instincts. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what, were you, what did you just reach for there? I went and grabbed the uh, the Bastinelli Mako because oh, this I feel is like a really good versatile blade. You get that classic blade shape. You got the ring, right? But to me, it, I take it one step further because it folds perfectly and fits right in your hand for an icebreaker for parties, right? Oh. Um, so, <laughs> so it has some versatility there, and and I love that. So, like, if you're nervous about like, or for anyone like carrying a karambit, because it's like, what am I going to use that blade shape for? Uh, the Mako uh, from Box and Bastinelli is superb. It's a fantastic blade. And, and while we're, while we're on Bastinelli, and you used the word elegant before, I think his designs, man, they are just every single design of his I've ever seen or held is just perfection and beautiful. Very, and it it has a a, a sexy, uh, you know, uh, what's the word like, uh, je ne sais quoi, essentially. Yeah, he's yeah. French because he's French, right? Yeah. Uh, one of my fixed blades that I've been carrying, and and one of the ones that I was going to have on me, like if I could only have one blade, it, at one point if this was the one that it was going to be because it's just super thin. And then you're talking about fixed blade versus folders, and I'll open it quietly for the microphone, but the uh, the brachial from Microtech and Bastinelli. And the Bastinelli is the chopper, chopper, the and chopper. and and that is a beauty. And uh, a good friend of mine carried carried that pretty much exclusively. He goes between that and the uh, and the PY and the red folder. Um, but and and I noticed recently you've been carrying the big uh, the big Drago tack, which is one of my absolute favorite. I love big folders, and most of my big folders are cold steel. But yeah, you know, because they're they're the the preeminent ones, but absolutely they, they they do it right they do and actually uh it's funny you go to the the bastinelli booth at blade show and uh you know he's so cool he's such a nice guy and he's very charming and then he has like all of these french guys who are like hey you want to take it you know they're all cool they all look cool they're all they all look like badasses and and they're the only table or i shouldn't say the only table but they there is always a bunch of women around the bastinelli table and i have to believe it's not only because of that but because the designs are so appealing universally. Like you do not have to be into knives to recognize the beauty of those things. 100%. So uh, let me ask you, you have a, a sharpening business. I, I was not aware of that until right before we started talking. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, it's uh, it's called Eagle's Edge Sharpening. And it is uh, something that just keeps keeps the time going. It's, uh, it's developed into a pretty nice little business. And uh, it's very relaxing, right? Just being able to, to sharpen or, or use a whetstone or sometimes, you know, a grinder, depending on the kind of work. But again, it started out of necessity because I'm like, I have all these blades. How the heck am I going to take care of them? You know, it's going to be expensive to keep, you know, buying a new one. Might as well learn how to resharpen it. Uh, so, yeah. So because of that, it's also taught me a lot about steels and the properties and, and what I look for. And it, it's truly helped the review process uh, as well, being able to give my input uh, on the on the blade quality. Well, what have you learned about steels? Which ones do you love? And um, are they all super steels? Are we nuts for, for spending all this money on super steels? uh no we're not but sometimes you know you get you walk into one of those conversations it's like um well actually um uh, s30v uh, and i'm like oh my god like, <laughs> uh, the vanadium you know they like have it all like memorized i'm like take it easy dude um <laughs> it's a knife you know do you like the design does it feel good uh i i always tell folks because i get that question like all the time like what's the best deal people are like beating sweats like say the one i like <laughs> i'll tell you what if you're traveling and all you have on you is uh, there's one of my favorite travel knives a uh, uh, pressure colt raptor or excuse me pressure colt nomad mm -hmm. it, it's a box cutter okay and that'll do the trick right you know it'll open up your package whatever you need to me the most important blade is the one you have on you right and it's like you know if you got your super steels at home and you're in a car crash and you're trying to cut your seatbelt, <laughs> but that dude with a gerber or even like a tack force you know yeah it's it's just it's what you have on you so to answer your question with the with the steels it's more so like for me what i've noticed is the tempering so for example on that buck it has like the paul boss heat treat yeah it's a great heat treat and it does it does what it needs to do and really brings out those properties of the the 420 so it just depends on what you want to do it if you if you like had to like you know tell me like which one's the best 
uh, right now I'm really digging a CTS XHP. That one is, has been really sweet. Uh, I have not tried the Magna cut. I haven't hopped on that train yet, but I want to, I want to test it out. I want to see what it's like. Uh, maybe it'll blow my socks off. I'll keep you updated. I have no idea, but, uh, for, for, I always, I'm like, for most people, you, you give them a blind, uh, you know, like a, a blind over their eyes and you tell them, you know, like cut through this. I, I've not found anyone on the earth that would be able to tell me what steals in their hand based on, you know, how many cuts it's going to get. So I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I must admit I've fallen for the super steel mind virus a little bit. I mean, especially when it comes to pricing, you know, I'm like, Oh, 200 bucks. This doesn't even have a super steel. Like, yeah. You know, there some of that is valid because you don't want to feel like you're you're paying too much for what you're getting. But by the same token, that super steel mind virus has gotten me at times to it's caught me or I've caught myself feeling like, oh, this is 420. This this must be like one use and it's like made of butter. And, you know, right. I press it into it's just going to like melt or fall apart. But that's just not true. Our, our worst steel today is like a hundred times better than what they had, you know, two hundred years ago. Yes, yes, and and don't get me wrong, there are some amazing steels out there. You know, M three ninety, you know, S thirty five CPM one. I think uh, what was it? Spider Co just came out with CPM fifteen V, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, a big brown bear. Yeah, big yeah, yeah. brown bear. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, like, what's up with that fool? Like, let's try it. I'm into it. I love it. And I want that competition and I want that, that healthy, you know, uh, the progression of the steals. I think it's like, yeah, but to me, it's like, I don't want to see other people like putting people down because it's like, Oh, you don't, you don't, you don't have the sprint run. <laughs> Give the shit, dude. He's carrying a knife, you know, yeah. like and let, let him be, let, you know, like bring people into the community. And sometimes I think when you get into like that steel debate, it's like, you know, you, people like tune out. And, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard enough just trying to get someone to carry a pocket knife for the first time, let alone, you know, ragging on them for, you know, the steel yeah. that they went with. So to me, well, to it's me a, it, it doesn't matter. It's a lot like, uh, you know, martial arts, the martial arts world or, or the professional sports world. It's like, you know, you can argue about a kicking technique for hours if you have the right group of martial arts nerds together. And it's fun and it's a thing of uh, a matter of debate and a matter of banter and sometimes it evol devolves into something uh worse certainly with uh you know teams and that kind of thing but um but the the notion that that you need those things to make a knife a knife you know it's just there's not much to it uh, yeah it's it's fun what, what about you what, what's your favorite steel right now i my favorite steel i mean i love uh 154 cm i'm an old-fashioned really? okay. guy i love 154 because it's something that i can uh easily yes thank you protect does a beautiful job with it it's mm -hmm. something that i can easily sharpen it's something with my cutting uh you know i mean it really there's very little cutting that i do uh, honestly so anything will do uh, but i like 154 cm because i can get it razor sharp and i can get it to to a nice edge that that both you know has a little bit of grip but also is polished you know i i just feel comfortable sharpening it and maintaining it and that's what i love that's half of it is can you maintain it because I've, I've been working at shows and people come up and you know they'll have you know a high-end knife and you like go feel the edge and you're like it's like a butter knife dude like what are you doing like can yeah. you keep it sharp that's half of it right yeah. um one interesting thing that's going on right now i think it's angler knives he does a really beautiful like scandy grind and if i correct i think he actually does it by hand but i could be wrong but he's like testing out different steels and i think it's really interesting to pay attention to because he's testing out the magna cut he's testing out uh, and comparing it i think to like that 154 cm like i don't know it, i could it could have already gone by but i think he's like trying to figure out like what is the best and, and they're like outdoor you know aquatic style bushcrafting tools so that, that's mm -hmm. probably gonna be one of the next fixed blades that i'm going after that the amtac and, and an angler knife the ones i'm looking at oh the amtac is pretty sweet um well, okay. You mentioned the community before. Uh, right. What uh, you you've been, you know, actually you've had a really nice growth. You've had a, you know, you haven't been uh, your channel hasn't been around for that long, and you've gotten uh, you've grown very nicely. Kind of, uh, it seems steadily and mm -hmm. and quickly. Um, what what have, are your impressions of the knife community? Um, how, how have what do you think of it? The the knife community as a whole. 
I think there are some outstanding people in there. Like I said, uh, uh, Jim that I met from, from the We Knives booth from the very first time. He, I literally call him like my uncle now. He's like Uncle Jim. Like he's just someone you can call and talk to. It's it's a small community. And I think a lot of people fail to realize that sometimes that it is so niche, right? I mean, there's not too many people into the knives. Like you're going to yeah. start seeing the same people over and over again. And for me, it's like, I'm going to treat everyone with respect. And, you know, there's always like those, those, you know, little riffs and stuff that go on. And I'm like, guys, really? What's the goal here? Right. We're all on the same team. At least I like to think like, get like, grow it. Right. And, and for me, it's like, being prepared is part of that like oh do you have a pocket knife on you oh wow i'd never thought about carrying one like and i'll bring people in and, and just you know make as many friends as you can because it's a small community and there's a lot of great people in there that that you know you call them up ask them a question and here's a great example of it we met one time really in person yeah. at you know blade show and it's like we've been we've been friends since so uh it's an easy easy way to to make some new friends I've also heard that from a lot of knife makers, man, people are so generous. Uh, you know, even, even the, the, the big, big, big makers, like I've heard, I heard someone recently and I can't remember who said this, but reaching out to Bob Terzuola and asking him a question and getting an answer. It's like, he knows Bob Terzuola knows that, that, uh, Bob DeMarco is not going to be making his knife. Even if I have every single one of his techniques, it'll right. take me a, another 60 years to come close. So, um, so I think that that kind of generosity, just like all, you know, everyone, you know, a rising tide raises all ships or whatever that term is, uh, uh, seems to be very prevalent, um, in the knife world. Uh, so here's something I want to do. I wrap up every, um, every interview with someone who's got a channel and who evaluates knives with a okay. speed round. And, okay. uh, so we're going to really, really find out the cut of your jib with this and, right, uh, Okay. <clears throat> Fixed or folder? Fixed. Okay. Uh, flipper or thumb stud? Thumb stud. Washers or bearings? Bearings. Tonto or Bowie? Bowie. Hollow ground or flat ground? Hollow. Okay. Now we're now we're going to move into the fixed uh, right. portion of this. Full right. guard or half guard? Half. Full tang or stick tang? Full tang. Contoured handle or neutral, uh, like a coffin style grip? Neutral. Condor or Ontario Knife Company? Ontario. Cold steel or work tough? Oh! <laughs> Why you got to do it like that, man? I knew oh. I'd get you with that. Oh, shoot. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeremy. Uh, I would have to say cold steel. I got more cold steels. All right, single-edged or double-edged? Single-edged. V-ground or uh, convex? Convex. Okay. Finger choil or no choil? Finger choil. Okay, form or function? Function. All right, and I think you already may have answered this, but your desert island knife, the one that you get to keep out of your collection uh, for, the rest, for the rest of your days for the rest of my day. if if i could only pick one that that i would like have fun with but now you said desert island so well, wait, wait. Like... Well, well desert island i just mean that uh metaphorically okay. a and right. b this 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 precludes all like sentiment well my grandfather gave me this so i'm gonna hold on to not oh, those kind of things you get to keep i just mean one of your uh one of your others you know oh man that that's a fantastic question I, I the one that i keep coming back to like if i could only have that one knife to do just about anything that i'd ever do it's the spider kill military right on man good and, answer. i'm sorry no keep going man praise me I, please <laughs> i i love that knife and just, and it gets it, it gets zero attention compared to the paramilitary two and the para three, but I love it because it's the the four inch one. And I've had that knife a long time and I am so excited for the military two. Me too. Now the one thing is, cause I'm a lefty and a lot of people like don't know that. So it gives oh. me another perspective on how I evaluate knives. Yeah. I would love to see a left-handed compression lock on that bad boy. Yeah. Probably not going to happen. Same with the Yojimbo. I don't think they do one with the Yojimbo left-handed mm -hmm. compression. So that sucks. But 
typically with everything i just i don't know i feel like i could do just about anything with that blade it's not over the top it's big enough to you know cut a bagel and small and delicate enough that you know you can pop a seam and you know remove a tag on a dress whatever you got to do like that blade you know it'll it'll get you through Oh man. So th those are basically the two things I use my knives for, uh, cutting bagels at work and taking little threads off and that kind there of thing. It is. Well, Tomas, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate your coming on the show and spending the time and, and sharing, uh, not only your love of knives, but also of preparedness and, uh, different strategies for being prepared is greatly appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And, and it's awesome. I, I I wanted to say this too. Like I've grown up in, in, from when I was younger, like, like listening to your channel and watching you from the start <laughs> and to be invited on is just, it, it blows my mind. And, and, uh, thank you so much. Seriously. Again. Oh my God. The pleasure is mine, sir. Thank you. Take care. All right. All the best. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Tomas Alas of the Tactical Tavern channel. Uh, awesome guy and a great channel. You got to go check it out. Um, not only does he feature great uh, knives and other equipment, uh, but those stories are invaluable. Uh, some of the stuff he shares, like I mentioned, that flashlight story really did shift my paradigm a bit. And I, I really appreciate that. Uh, there will be more conversation with Tomas uh, over on uh, Patreon. So if you want to hear more, come join us on Patreon. Uh, quickest way to do that is to scan the QR code or go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast